Year Jumbo, Jumbo, Karibu, back to another vlog. Like I said in my last one, that is Swahili for hello and welcome. But where I'm at now, I'm in Zanzibar, but more specifically, Stone Town. Let's get to it. back to another vlog i hope everybody's doing well and i hope everybody's in good spirits on this fine day as per usual if we can go ahead and get the official business out the way if y'all could go ahead and hit that notification bell so y'all can get them immediate notifications of when all my videos drop if y'all could go ahead and subscribe to the kid all you gotta do is hop on the youtube search bar all you gotta do is type in g space i z is space international and you'll find the kid right there and if you could go ahead and hop on instagram and follow your boy under the same name at g is international i first want to say i thoroughly enjoy being out in the bush you know a lot of people that know me know i love getting away from the city and just you know getting close to nature especially animals and i'm very happy that i got to do that um, but i'm happy to get out of that environment and be able to explore more of tanzania and especially hit this island zanzibar so zanzibar in itself it's about a 45 minute plane ride from both the arusha airport as well as the kilimanjaro airport it's also a two to three hour ferry ride from one of the major cities in tanzania dar es salaam stone town where i'm located is actually one of the main cities out here in zanzibar and its overall historical importance can't be missed especially when you're looking at the continent's overall history as well as Tanzania and Zanzibar's overall history. So the hotel that I'm staying at is called the Mizangani Seafront Hotel. It's actually two minutes from the Zanzibar ferry and about a 20 minute drive from the Zanzibar airport. Now I think this hotel is pretty dope because it's situated right in front of the ocean. You can literally step outside and see regular life happening and you can see all the boats and everything happening right in front of the port where the ferries pull up. This hotel is pretty interesting, not only because of its location, but it was also created specifically as a custom house for sultans to relax, chill, and spend their leisure time. And you can actually tell that it was created for royalty based on a lot of the architecture and how they design the insides of this particular place. The hotel is very quiet, it's cozy, it got a nice little inside pool. And as I stated earlier, I think it's really dope because it's situated right in front of the ocean. So you can literally step outside, and you can sit on the bench, and you can watch the sunset. I mean, it's, it's a really dope hotel. belongs to a group of islands that are scattered all along the coast of Tanzania and there are numerous islands a lot of them people don't live there they're just islands a few of them people are able to visit but a lot of them people aren't Zanzibar is also part of Tanzania interestingly enough Tanzania and Zanzibar they both have their own president one governing mainland Tanzania as well as one governing the island of Zanzibar. Stone Town in itself is actually a UNESCO World Heritage Site and it is embedded with numerous cultures, specifically European influence, Persian influence, Indian influence, and immense amount 
of Arab influence. If you know me, you know I'm an absolute history junkie. So it's pretty interesting to be in a town to where its history is literally at the forefront and you can see it staring in your face. I mean, every city has its own history. It didn't just pop up today. But I think Stonetown does a good job keeping its history at the forefront and never allowing people to forget what happened here and how important Stonetown is and was to the world. I mean, from graffiti markings all over the place, the local markets, the architecture, the narrow pathways all over the place. Yo, it literally keeps its history at the forefront and I absolutely love that. I do feel like as I get older, I'll be appreciating the small things so much. This breeze out here is absolutely jumping out the gym, yo. I don't know if maybe it's because I spend all my time in the desert and it's a million degrees outside, but I love the way this wind is blowing and gently touching my skin. It is, it feels absolutely amazing. And it feels nice to just not have the sun melting you and boiling and trying to rip your skin off, you feel me? like. It's perched to this nice weather right here. But yeah, like I said, Stone Town is a very dope place. I do get this feeling that it's a very close-knit community here. You know, I guess cause you know, all the pathways and just the maneuvering around this city is very small. You know, I feel like the people are very friendly and very neighborly and you know, at least to me, people have been very friendly. You know, my uh, apparently my nickname out here, just like last time is Rasta. You know what I'm saying? And you know, they always feel like they can get my attention with that. As the Islander, that I am, I do feel like maybe one day this could potentially be my home, you feel me? I do feel like one of the dopest places that I've seen while maneuvering through these streets out here in Stone Town is the Old Fort. Now, from afar, it looks all broken and you could tell that, you know, it's been through some things. You know, first the Portuguese had hold of it, then the Omanis got their hands on it, then the British got their hands on it, and obviously now it belongs to the people of Stone Town, where it's shops and all types of things where people are outside selling and trading a variety of things but obviously back in the times it was used as a fort to help defend the city attached to the back side of the old fort is an open-air amphitheater here you can find live dance shows as well as music performances but also large events such as the Zanzibar International Film Festival alright y'all so look this next segment was very important to me and as you can see the the water behind me, you know, it was very important to do this segment by the water. Um, while Stone Town is definitely an impressive place that definitely has its culture and its history at the forefront, I think, you know, when you think of Africa, especially in, you know, the past, you know, it's very hard not to think of how slavery was a monopoly being ran on this country, especially from other citizens from other places. It's very unfortunate to know that Tanzania in itself, but more specifically on this island and in this specific town, Stone Town, was a major hub for trading slaves. For me personally, it was very important to do this particular segment by the water behind me because for a lot of people, our ancestors, the last thing that they saw their homeland was a boat and the ocean and being shipped off into a big boat out in the middle of the sea that was gonna take them to wherever they was going. So for me, it was very important to try and do this segment right here along the waters of Stone Town. The slave trade that was happening right here in Stone Town was in fact the largest slave trade market that was happening 
on the coast of East Africa. Not only was it the largest slave trader market here, it was also the very last slave trader market that was left open up until slavery in Africa was abolished. I think we've all heard of the transatlantic slave trade. People that were taken and put into slavery were generally taken from the western parts of Africa. They were traded to the Caribbean islands, North America, and South America, as well as Europe. But in fact, the people that were taken from the east coast of Africa, they were taken to serve as slaves to parts of the Middle Eastern world, as well as the Northern African world. Countries like Oman, countries like Qatar, countries further out east in the world, like in places like Asia. Because Stonetown does a very good job at showing off its culture as well as keeping its history at the forefront, there is a museum here called the East African Slavery Museum. And y'all, when I say it's a lot, it's a lot. I don't think it's one of those museums that you can just look at a few words or look at a few artifacts and breeze through. I personally believe that it is one of those museums to where you probably need about a good hour to just sit down, read, and take in all the information that you're seeing. It is a lot, y'all. I will not lie. It is absolutely a lot. Not only do you have the opportunity to walk through the East African Slavery Museum, there are also numerous sites all throughout Stonetown, specifically made and dedicated to where they held slaves captive. And yo, it's a lot. It's 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 absolutely a lot. Like I, there's there's nothing else to say. Like yo. There's this big church out in Stonetown, the Anglican Cathedral Church that was built actually on top of the place where the market of slaves were being sold. It's a big old nice church, but you know, it, it kind of just, when you see it in modern day times, it just kind of gives you this nasty feeling in your gut to know that you were standing in the center and the market where you could literally walk up the same way that you buy, you know, meat, vegetables and fruits and things like that what was being sold were people black people as i said and as you can probably see like a lot of this stuff is very uncomfortable and you know it's, it's very unfortunate as well as very heartbreaking but i would definitely recommend that even if you're not a history buff just to get you some education about how things were and how people were treated specifically black people were treated back in the day again it's gonna hurt it's gonna suck it's gonna be uncomfortable it's gonna make you you know need a time out and things like that but in my opinion it's it's, it's very worth it the people that came before us they want us to know this information it, it was an absolute atrocity and seeing it firsthand is it's heartbreaking, yo. It's absolutely heartbreaking. All right, y'all. So just to ease the edge a little bit off of that conversation, 
I want to take you to the next place that I've been and it's not even 30 minutes away from here in Stone Town. It's this island called Prison Island, also known as Changu Island. Now this island is a place to where they normally used to keep prisoners and things like that on this particular place. There's actually an old prison building that's still here today. Now today and in modern times it doesn't serve as a prison building but it is still standing. It's been remodified and at one point it was turned into like a bar and there was a hotel surrounding it so people could stay and things like that but it was in fact a prison being held here. What it ended up turning to after some time was a quarantine cell. You know folks that was getting diseases like malaria and chicken pox this was the place that they were in fact held today it's really just kind of like a, a touristy kind of site you know they got these big old ancient tortoises these huge humongous tortoises that have been sitting here for years they say that the british brought them over from another african island being the seychelles and that they have been living here for some time you know i actually seen a turtle that i was told that this guy is a hundred and 97 years old, bruh. 197 years old. Fam, that's crazy. That's absolutely crazy. That's, that's crazy crazy. 197 though? These tortoises are actually called the Aldabra tortoises. And yo, they can weigh up to about 200 kg, which is about 400 pounds. And yo, when I say these things are huge, fam. They are absolutely huge. Again, for modern times, this island ain't serving its purpose for what it used to be. You can actually find bungalows in the back of the island to where people are out there just chilling, getting a suntan on, getting in the water. That's actually where I'm sitting right now, just right by the beach, just chilling. And uh, yeah. That's Prison Island, folks. I'm sorry for making it so dark for a second, but I feel like as a black man, like I couldn't come to Stone Town and just talk about all the good things and what's so cool and awesome about it without talking about some of the atrocities that occurred directly in this space. I figure Prison Island and some nice views would be a way to lighten things up. With all that being said, yo, I think I'm gonna close this vlog out right here. Yo, I must say I've had a very extremely fun time out here in Stone Town. Like I said, I'm a history junkie, so just having history thrown in your face like that and just having time to reflect this, you know, it's a big deal for me. Yo, the people were amazing, the vibes was amazing, the views was amazing, and yo, let me tell you, the food was on point too. Yo, I had this like Zanzibar pizza, that thing was hitting, you know, I, I added some pepperonis, you know, cause they was big on the seafood on the pizza and stuff, but you know, I had to add the pepperonis and I also went to like this local restaurant and I had like their local rice, I had some chicken with that thing, I had some chicken samosas, you feel what I'm saying? I also had like, they gave me like this little chili to put on the rice and yo, it was extra, extra spicy. One thing I know for sure, two things for certain is that Africans, yo, they love their chilies and they love their spice. It's like as soon as that chili and them spices hit my tongue, fam, like my nose is already running and I'm like, yo fam, he needs some milk. <laughs> but anyway, yo, I appreciate y'all just kicking it with me for another vlog and checking out my adventures through Stone Town out here in Zanzibar. Yo, y'all already know the business, man. If y'all could go ahead and hit that notification bell so you can stay notified on when all my videos is dropping if you could go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you can't find me all you gotta do is hop on youtube type in the search bar g space iz space international and you'll find me right there and if you could go ahead and hop on instagram and follow me at the same name at g is international and if you got a few more minutes yo go ahead and check out a brother website all you gotta do is go to www.g is international.com and all things me you'll find it right there yo 
I enjoyed creating for y'all. I enjoyed being here, and I hope y'all enjoyed coming along this adventure with me out here in Stone Town. But until next time, as they call me out here in Zanzibar, very specifically, yo, this is Rasta G. This is Mr. G is International. And until next time, peace. one more time y'all happy new year stick to them goals i'm gonna try to stick to mine and we gonna kill 2023 yo peace out one more time y'all be easy and thank y'all again for checking out another adventure peace <laughs>